I invite you to say this short prayer right now. Lord, prepare me even if I am afraid. Lord, prepare me for my death even if I am afraid. And I invite you to bow down your head and close your eyes and speak to yourself, to your inner self, to your real self, and say to your real inner self, Soon, I will die. Malapit na akong mamatay. That is the truth. It is not coming from a depressed heart. It is not coming from a discouraged or cynical mind. We are all getting nearer and nearer to our death. And we must remember, life is temporary, very temporary. When we were born, we were born with a twin sister. And that twin sister, according to St. Francis of Assisi, is Sister Death. Death is the most certain that will happen to us, but it is also the most uncertain. We know we will die, and we will die very soon. But we don't know how. We don't know where. We don't know when. Some people die tragically in an accident, or in violence, or in their sleep. Some people die after a sudden sickness or a lingering sickness. Some people die by so many other reasons. We don't know where. In the street, in the hospital, with loved ones, alone, we don't know where. We don't know when. We don't know how. We only know one thing. We will all die. There is also something very certain about death. And what is that? All death is painful. We have headache, we have body aches, stomach aches, knee aches, joint aches. We have aches coming from a surgical procedure. We have discomforts coming from chemotherapy. All of these are aches. We can also get pains because of wounds, because of uh, broken bones, or maybe because of a bleeding part of our body inside us. All of these causes pain. But you know, all the pains that we are enduring right now as human beings will pale in comparison to the pain of separation of body and soul. Theologians say that is the most painful part of our lives. Doctors can give us anesthesia, but there is no anesthesia when that time comes when the body is separated from the soul. All death is painful. That is why Christ allowed himself to endure the painful separation of his soul from his body at Calvary. And Christ endured that for only one reason. He loves us. Christ at Calvary says to you, all love is painful because all growth is painful and there can be no growth in life unless there is pain in loving. And that is why you can also understand why the Lord Jesus Christ, out of love for His Blessed Mother, spared His Mother from that painful separation of body from the soul 
That is why our Catholic faith teaches us that the Blessed Virgin Mary was assumed body and soul into heaven. She was spared from original sin. She was also spared from the pain of separating body from soul. So that is the reality. All death is painful and all of us will die. There is no sense in saying, I am not going to die. That is a ridiculous statement. But you must be reminded that death is getting nearer. And then I ask you, what are you living for? What are you wasting your life for? If you know that life is short, and life is indeed short, why are you wasting your love? Why are you wasting your life? Why are you wasting your time on something that is so trivial, on something that is so unimportant? Death is a miserable part of our lives. It is misery. You remember our cry when we say the Hail Holy Queen? In this mourning, in this sighing, in this valley of tears. But death is not just a miserable part of our human existence. Death is also a grace. In fact, it is a gift of God's mercy. And if I may quote one of the fathers of the church is the God's thing, it is both misera et misericordia. It is both misery and mercy. Why is death a gift of mercy? Can you imagine if we would not die? Can you imagine living for 500 years and not dying? We pray for a long life, but is 500 years a blessing? Living for 1,000 years without dying? That is not a blessing at all. Somewhere, somewhere sometime in our lives, we are going to say, how long will I stay in this valley of tears? And then, when Sister Death comes to visit us, we understand that death is not only a miserable pain to carry, death is also a gift of mercy from our loving God. It is as if God visits us and says to you, enough, enough in this valley of misery, enough in this valley of tears, come home with me. So I'm back to my question, what are you living for? What are you dying for? What is the meaning of your life? At the sunset of our lives, we know it is not money that will be asked of us. It is not the popularity of the elections, of the polls, of the surveys, of the contests, of the pageants, of the Olympic Games that we win. At the sunset of our lives, it is not about what other people say that should matter. At the sunset of our lives, St. John of the Cross said, we will only be judged according to love. And if we are going to be judged according to love, we, we will also be punished according to our absence of love. And I say, perhaps one of the greatest miseries we have to carry at the point of our last breath is that when we cannot say, I have forgiven everybody and I have asked everybody to forgive me. When at the point of death, you are not able to forgive everybody who has hurt you. 
that would indeed be miserable because there will be no more opportunities. And at the point of death, when you cannot refuse to understand that life is ended, and then there are people seeking your forgiveness, and you say to them by your actions, no way will I forgive you. That would indeed be a very miserable life, a very miserable death. At the end of our lives, our only regret is not only that we have not loved enough, our regret will be we have not forgiven everybody and we have not asked forgiveness from everybody. Because when we die, we will not hurt each other anymore. But before we die, we must forgive and reconcile. That is what death beckons us to do right now. That is why at the point of death, the Lord said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. That is why before he breathed his last, the Lord said, Father, forgive them. And because the Lord had forgiven everybody, and the Lord had offered forgiveness for those who do not even seek it, and the Lord had offered forgiveness to those who were really longing for it, it was a life well lived, it was also a death that was meaningful, that was beautiful, it was painful, but it was loving. Now I return to the same question. Are you ready to die soon? If you are not yet ready to die, ask the Lord to make you ready. Lord, prepare me, even if I am afraid. Lord, change me, even if I am not ready. In you, Lord, is my life. In you, Lord, I found my peace. In you, Lord, our body will rest in hope. Amen.